Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. An explosive scare at the Ambassador Bridge. Live pictures from Sky 4 as police say they have someone under arrest. Sean. A 14-month-old boy found dead in a Farmington Hills motel room tonight. The parents are in custody, but were they even there when police went searching for the little boy? But we're going to begin with breaking news from Clinton Township, where police are on the scene of a shooting at a car dealership. Hap it's happening at the R and R Car Company on northbound Gratiot. That's near Henry B. Joy Boulevard. Let's get you right to Mara McDonald here off the top at five with the latest. Mara. Devin, take a look. You can see that Clinton Township Police has got the entirety of the R&R car company uh, cordoned off at this point. Police are confirming for us that there are two employees here at R&R who were shot this afternoon with what we are being told are non-life-threatening injuries. They say the shooter got away, got in a car, took off. He is unknown at this point. They are simply saying it is a man. They're looking for more details right now. Police briefed us just moments ago. They say that information right now is preliminary. Take a listen. I do not know the circumstances surrounding um, the uh, the incident that occurred before the, the shooting happened. So I'm not sure what led up to the shooting at this at this time. Back here live, you can see police back here. We've seen them on foot doing a perimeter. They clearly are looking for surveillance video off of any homes or any businesses trying to get a look at who this shooter is and what car he was in. We're live in Clinton Township right now. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara. Now to traffic on the Ambassador Bridge, which is moving at this hour after an explosive scare this morning. The possible explosives were discovered in a secondary inspection area on the Canadian side of the bridge. Priya Mann has been following this story since it broke. Uh, Priya, police have made an arrest, correct? Yeah, that's right. Kim Devin, Windsor Police do have one person in custody. The bomb squad had to deploy a robot during this investigation. Take a live look right now. Throughout much of the day, truck traffic from Canada into the U.S. was a trickle, but it was a complete slowdown, shutdown from the U.S. into Canada. Just moments ago, though, the Ambassador Bridge fully reopened. Oh, it's been a long day, obviously. I still have a couple more hours before I'm done my shift. Truck drivers trying to make their way into Canada were turned back Monday morning. Over the radio, we heard it might, might have been possible explosive on the Canadian side, and therefore they uh, uh, blocked the uh, traffic both sides in and out. The Ambassador Bridge was shut down Monday for vehicles entering Canada after the Canadian Border Services Agency alerted Windsor Police about possible explosives inside a vehicle in the secondary inspection area. The officer told me is around three hours supposed to be back up. In a tweet just before one Monday afternoon, Windsor Police said no direct threats were made to specific places or persons, but traffic would continue to be rerouted. Nobody told us uh, what's going on inside. Windsor Police say there was no threat and the driver of the vehicle has been detained and is in custody. Given the situation, who knows uh, if and when this can be resolved. Late Monday afternoon, traffic was still trickling on both sides of the border. Uh, I'd like to get home. Uh, I've, been, I've been at work since 6 this morning. I said with the situation, we don't know what's going on. And this will certainly have an economic impact. The Ambassador Bridge, one of the busiest border crossings in the world, a quarter of trade between the U.S. and Canada happens right here. Now, while the investigation is ongoing and the border has reopened, we will continue to follow developments from across the border. Reporting live from tonight in southwest Detroit, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Hey, Priya, thank you. Our other top story tonight, Farmington Hills Police are investigating the death of a 14 month old baby child was found in a room at the Motel 6 on Grand River and right now that child's parents are in custody. Sean Lay with us now and Sean, uh, you spoke to someone staying at the motel who saw a lot of police last night. A lot of police and Farmington Hills police were at that Motel 6, not far from here because members of that 14 month old baby boy's family came here to Farmington Hills police headquarters concerned about the boy. They had not seen the boy had not heard from the parents for a, uh, a length of time. So they asked Farmington Hills police to do a welfare check. That's what brought them to the motel. A baby 
Come on, man. David Taru is staying in the room just feet away from the room where a 14-month-old boy was found dead Sunday evening. It happened at this Motel 6 on Grand River near 10 Mile. Sources tell us police and fire were going room to room, frantically searching for the little boy. They were here searching for the, I think they were searching everywhere. The trash can, everything. They were looking for everything. They were searching that. Yeah, the down one, there? yeah, the one down there. The boy's grandmother came, also demanding to know where the little boy was. It was the baby, the grandmother came, the grandmother was yelling, she was furious. She was like, where's the baby, where's the baby? The fire truck came, the paramedics came, a lot of police, you know. They were here all night. When the boy's body was finally discovered, witnesses say in room 256, police then questioned the people who are believed to be the boy's mother and father who were staying in that room. They have got them. You know, they took them away. It is unclear if the mom and dad were even with the child's body when police arrived last night. Police got involved after family members came to the Farmington Hills Police Headquarters asking for a welfare check for the little boy. Police searched and found the child's body. Where the child's body was found, right now police won't say as the investigation continues. I want to make it clear the little boy's body was found in the room that the mom and dad were renting, but police aren't commenting on the circumstances on how the boy's body was found or where in the room or what condition the boy's body was found or if the parents were at the room at the time. Sources are telling us that the boy's body showed signs of possible abuse, both mom and dad being held right now and questioned pending charges. Still a lot of questions, though. Back to you. Well, Sean, we got the account of what happened last night. Did anyone see this child and parents before? We did hear from people. People at the motel said no. They never saw a uh, boy near that room. Mm. Other people said they saw the couple going back and forth across Grand River in traffic sometimes. They were concerned for the boy, and they said they called it in, worried about that boy's uh, condition and health yeah. at the time. Yeah. All right, Sean. We'll keep following it. Meanwhile, we managed to get a few peaks of the sun today, but uh, parts of the area hit by severe weather last night. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize this. Let's get over to Paul with yeah. a tornado that touched down in Oakland County, Paul. Right. This was not a classic severe weather environment. It was just one brief localized spin up here in northwest Oakland County at 621 on our Sunday evening. Now, the tornado itself touched down around Oak Hill Road and it came right across this subdivision here and then it lifted right after crossing Dixie Highway here. Now, this tornado was less than a mile in terms of its path on the ground. It was only on the ground for three minutes and it was 75 miles wide and an EF zero tornado with 65 mile per hour wind. Come on back in our next half hour. Our local four news at five. We're going to use Storm Tracker 4 to dive deep into the science of what happened there last night. But right now, for those of you trying to get a few evening things done, scattered showers across the area with a few downpours. Areas that are getting a little sun right now are in the 70s. The rest of us are in the 60s. But we will fall through the 60s with scattered showers through the evening hours. I'll have the forecast also for the rest of the week, including the weekend, in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Paul, now let's move to the coronavirus and the three-day total from over the weekend. State reporting 8,704 new cases, so an average of 2,900 cases a day, 62 more deaths also being reported over that same three-day period. Michigan, though, is tracking coronavirus outbreaks in schools across the state, too. That's right. We just got an update into the newsroom, and here's where things stand. There are currently more than 100 new and ongoing COVID-19 outbreaks in schools. You remember that cases in schools are considered an outbreak when there are three or more cases among kids from different households that may have stemmed from shared exposure on school grounds. For a complete list of the impacted schools, go to our website, clickondetroit.com. One number that is not rising quickly, though, is the percentage of Detroiters who are fully vaccinated. According to the state dashboard, right now just 37.7 percent, about 38 percent of Detroit residents age 12 and up are fully vaccinated. Compare that to 65.2 percent of Wayne County residents excluding Detroit. We bring in Dr. Frank Me George here with a closer look at the effort to try to reach more Detroiters. It's a, a, an awfully low number, Doc. Sure is, Kim and Devin. So this is a real challenge that we need to overcome, and it's one that has attracted the attention of the federal government. In fact, part of the White House COVID-19 response team recently visited Detroit to talk to people who have not yet been vaccinated. And we spoke with Dr. Cameron Webb, the senior advisor for equity on that team, to find out what he learned during his visit to Detroit.
for a lot of people, I, I did hear just uh, how confusing and conflicting the misinformation was. You know, they, they would say that they heard something from a friend or a family member months ago. And when you get a lot of conflicting health information, it can be kind of paralyzing. Dr. Webb admits it takes a lot of work to clear up that confusion. What we always say is that misinformation is sticky. It, it sounds scary and it sticks with you. And we can hit you with the truth 10 times over, but it doesn't necessarily overcome that thing that you were scared of. He says the White House supports the ongoing local efforts to get more Detroiters vaccinated. Part of what we did is just really had deep conversations. There's one lady who came up to me afterward and she's like, okay, I made the decision. I'm getting vaccinated today. And she talked about having had a really tough bout of COVID last fall and hearing from me and hearing me talk about about, you know, all the importance and the value and the science behind it. She said she feels like that's her best bet to stay safe during this fall. And I think we just need to continue to have those conversations. Webb hopes the approaching holidays will push more people to get vaccinated to help protect not only themselves, but especially their loved ones. Keep in mind, you need about five weeks between that, that holiday and when you got your first shot. And so if you want to be fully vaccinated in time for Thanksgiving, that's October 12th. That's coming up in just a week and a half. And so now is the time to get vaccinated so you have that full protection heading into you know, the, the holidays later on this year. We want everybody to be safe. We want people to start getting back to the things that matter most, but we've got to start by keeping people safe. Now, Dr. Webb was here with the Secretary of Education, so they were also talking with parents and students specifically about the importance of getting more of those age 12 and up vaccinated. Uh, Frank, beyond education and outreach, what else does the team have to work with here to try to boost these numbers? Well, you know, Dr. Webb said he thinks the employer vaccine mandates that President Biden is pushing mm. for is really what could make the biggest difference right now. Because, you know, we've already seen several industries when employers require the vaccine, the majority of employees are, in fact, getting vaccinated. Yeah. So it works. Controversially so to many, though, of course, is that uh, we, we'll stay on this uh, effort, though. That's yeah. so few. We're still under 38 percent at this point in the city. Yeah. All right. Well, the defenders are uncovering disturbing new information in the case of a Detroit police officer charged yeah. with domestic abuse. New here at five. What police claim happened that night and why they say the victim in the case couldn't call for help. And she says it's much more than just a nuisance how a local state rep plans to curb illegal dumping in Detroit. But first, police make a pretty wild find downriver. Let's uh, just say that's not a squirrel. We'll be right back.